Hello, Royals. Lesson 5.3 is a direct continuation of Lesson 5.2. In Lesson 5.2, we learned that um, there are actually different definitions for these trig ratios, depending on um, Cartesian definitions. Sir Kicks or Ticks gives us the ratios that we want. 5.3 concentrates more on the signs, S-I-G and S, of these ratios. Let's just consider. We're going to have some pretty terrible formatting here. Um, angles in any of the four quadrants. And the bad formatting is instead of coming up with some number here, I'm just going to record the signs of these numbers. In the first quadrant, both x and y values are positive. In the second quadrant, x values are negative, but y values are positive. I'm going left and up. In the third quadrant, x and y values are both negative. And over here in the fourth quadrant, x values are positive, but y values are negative. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, 3, and quadrant 4. Okay. Now for all of these quadrants, let's keep in mind the fact that the radius is always positive. This is because the radius measures a distance out. You're always going out. This isn't, uh, if I'm measuring the circle here, that's not a radius of positive 5 and that's a radius of negative 5. It's out from the center 5 in all directions. Okay. If we use these definitions here, we notice that the sine of an angle in the first quadrant is going to be the ratio of a positive to a positive, which is positive. The cosine uh, ratio is going to be a ratio of positive to a positive, which is also going to be positive. And the tangent ratio is going to be here. Let's put positives on our radius. The ratio of a positive to a positive, which is also positive. So what we can say is that all ratios are positive in the first quadrant. All ratios positive in this quadrant. Okay. Over here in the second quadrant, when we measure the ratio of y to r, we're still going to have a ratio of a positive to a positive, our, um, b which gives us a positive ratio. But the cosine ratio has the ratio of uh, x to r, which is going to be the ratio of a negative to a positive, which will yield a negative ratio. And the tangent ratio, which is the ratio of y to x, is going to be the ratio of a positive to a negative, which is going to yield a negative ratio. So notice that in this quadrant, as far as the primary ratios go, we say only the sine ratios are positive in quadrant 2. Do the same thing over here. Ratio of y to r is going to be negative to positive. Ratio of x to r is going to be negative to positive. Ratio of y to x is going to be negative to negative. Uh, negative divided by positive is going to be positive. A negative divided by positive is going to be positive. But a negative divided by negative, whoops, sorry. Negative divided by positive is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. Uh, negative divided by negative is positive. And that means that in this quadrant, only the tangent ratios are positive. Well, we had all sine ratios, tangent ratios. We shouldn't be surprised that only cosine ratios are going to be positive here. This should make sense as well. Any ratio that has um, a y value in it is going to be a negative ratio in this case. The ratio of y to r is going to be negative. The ratio of y to x is going to be negative. The reason why the cosine ratio is positive here is because x values are positive in the fourth quadrant. So my ratio of x values to r values is going to be positive, meaning that only the cosine ratios are positive. Now, in my grade 11 university class or my advanced functions class, um, I don't I don't, I don't really want students to memorize this rule. I don't think we have to. I think we can figure out whether a ratio is going to be positive or negative by looking at its sketch. But it can be useful to have it memorized. You just need to make sure, if you're going to memorize it, that you get it right. This is sometimes called, if you look at these C-A-S-T rule, it's sometimes called the cast rule. Not all mathematicians like this. It's like memorizing FOIL. It doesn't work for every single situation. 
and we want to make sure we understand what's happening. But yeah, it, you starting in the fourth quadrant, just so that it sounds like a real word. Otherwise, we'd have to call it the ASTK rule, um, which doesn't roll off the tongue. Now, the CAST rule says cosine ratios are positive in quadrant four. All ratios are positive in quadrant one. Sine ratios are positive in quadrant two. Tangent ratios are positive in quadrant three. Okay. It can help you remember whether a ratio should be positive or negative. It can also help you remember how many solutions an equation should have. But I don't think if you I, I believe if you draw a sketch that you won't have to remember instead. So my advice is um, to sketch and use the definitions. Sketch and use X, Y, R definitions, which you need to have memorized anyway and you don't need to memorize the cast rule. Let's illustrate. I'll try to point out where the cast rule shows up, but um, we sh I don't think you should be start starting these questions by memorizing. Here's an example. It says the point negative 512 lies on the terminal arm of an angle theta in standard position. It is kind of this question to remind us to sketch the angle. Okay, We should not start with this um, uh, calculator question. Really what we're going to try to do is figure out the value of the angle to the nearest degree, but starting with our calculator is a bad idea. Let's start with the sketch of the angle theta in standard position. Um, negative 5 comma 12 is going to be left, say left 5 up 12. So look, we know that our angle is definitely in the second quadrant which means we know that our angle is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. We could estimate it. Looks like our angle is probably closer to 90 degrees than it is 180 degrees. Um, if I know my definitions, then I won't have to memorize that the cosine ratio is negative here, for example. We'll, we'll see that um, every single ratio is uh, reported there. Oh, I don't think we're doing reciprocal trig ratios those off. Okay. The question gives us another little hint here. Um, we should be able to figure out the value of theta by finding the value of any ratio. We're equipped to use the tangent ratio, but we might want to use the sine ratio or the cosine ratio. So the, the directions that they give us, I guess, is let's find the value of r. Right. That value of r is the value of your radius. This circle centered at 0, 0 has an equation of r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Let's keep in mind the radius has to be positive. It's always positive. So if I substitute in, and I should show my work here, you might recognize this as a Pythagorean triplet. This is going to be a 5, 12, 13 triangle. I get r squared equals 25 plus 144, and 25 plus 144 is 169. And if I take the square root of both sides, I don't consider plus or minus because I know the radius has to be positive. That gets me that the radius has to be 13. And it's nice that it turns out to be an integer here. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, mean, I should have crossed out ratios. Determine the primary ratios for angle theta. Here's where I, get, I, I don't think we need to memorize a rule. We have to memorize that the sine of theta is going to be the ratio of y to r. And on my sketch, I see that if y is 12, then r is 13. Do I need to remember that the sine ratio is going to be positive there? Do I have to use cast rule and say, oh, make sure that sine ratio is positive? I don't think so, because I see that y is positive. How about the cosine ratio? The cosine of theta, make sure your ratios have arguments. Okay, saying sine equals is nonsense. Cosine of theta is the ratio of x to r. Uh, if my x value is negative 5, then my r value would be 13. Well, of course the cosine ratio is negative, because my x value is negative and my r value is positive. How about the tangent ratio? The tangent of theta. This one's just got a little bit of a hiccup. Um, we, we should keep these exact. There's absolutely no reason to reach for a calculator. Now, I don't think we've needed a calculator yet. It would have helped here. but um, Tangent ratio is the ratio of y to x. If y is 12, x is negative 5. So yeah, this is the one little hiccup, is that we should probably write this as negative 12 fifths.
Okay. Now, we have um, three ratios that we could use to calculate the value of theta to the nearest degree. Two of these, though, won't tell me the answer that I'm looking for. One of them will happen to, but I, I don't think it's a good idea to strategize because if, if this angle were in the third quadrant, like the example yesterday, then no um, trig ratio will give me the right answer. I don't think there's much memorization here either, other than memorizing that your calculator may not give you the right answer. Let's use each one of these and figure out why it's telling us the answer that it is. Let's take the inverse sine of 12 thirds. I'm going to introduce a new symbol because I'm not sure what my calculator is going to tell me. I'm going to pretend that I'm not. If you learn how your calculator is programmed, though, you should be able to predict that when we do the inverse sine of 12 thirteenths, my calculator is going to tell me here this answer right here. It thinks perhaps that I'm going through the point 5 comma 12 with a radius of 13. It's going to tell me the answer closest to zero where the sine ratio is positive. Now I see that perhaps the sine uh, the cast rule might help us because the calculator is going to tell me the smallest angle uh, or angle closest to zero where my sine ratio is positive and that happens in the first quadrant. Watch my calculator do that in degree mode. I ask for the inverse sine of, make sure you don't do the inverse sine of 12 and then divide by 13. The inverse sine of 12 has no answer, so it, it can't divide it by 13. Now we want the inverse sine of either 12 thirteenths with a fraction button or just the inverse sine of bracket 12 divided by 13. You should not have to do 12 divided by 13 and then approximate that. If you do 12 divided by 13 first, and then you ask your calculator for the inverse sine and hit equals, your calculator will probably spit out the angle that you want. Lots of different ways of getting that. Beta is about 67 degrees. Now, we already knew that our angle that we're looking for, theta, um, was bigger than 90 degrees. My calculator is telling me the related acute angle that has um, a ratio that is related to this ratio. I need to look at my sketch and say, all right, so if um, the related acute angle in this case is 67 degrees, then I want to find the angle that is in this case 67 degrees short of 180 degrees. So I'll say theta is about 180 degrees minus 67 degrees. So really, this is all I need my calculator for. I should be able to do the rest of this by hand. Even this, we should be able to do by hand. Um, I mean, it's probably a good idea to check because I'm not so good with the subtraction. Hey. Okay. And that seems reasonable. That looks like, if you asked me to estimate that, I probably would have said it's about 120 degrees. Okay. What if we had used the tangent ratio? Now, like, we're done this question. I just want to illustrate what would have happened if. Sometimes students um, jump to the tangent ratio because if they couldn't find the value of r or they, they forgot to find all the other ratios, we have enough information here to use the tangent ratio. Watch what happens here. I'm going to ask my calculator for the inverse tangent. And I'm just introducing a different symbol because I think my calculator is going to tell me something else. That's a gamma. Um, the inverse tangent of, I'm going to type it in the way that it's seen here, just to illustrate that if I do 12 divided by negative 5, my calculator says, oh, that's negative 2.4. And then the way that my calculator is programmed, if I say which uh, angle has a ratio of y to x of negative 2.4, it's going to give me this answer down here. Or perhaps it's going to imagine that we're going right 5 down 12. It's not going to give me this answer because that answer is further from zero. That's the answer I want. It's going to give me this answer. And if you can predict that ahead of time, then you're never going to be surprised when you do the inverse tangent of 12 divided by negative 5. And you say, what? Why is it a negative number? I don't get it. Your sketch shows you why. Also, you would never just type into your calculator and write down the answer that your calculator gives you. That doesn't happen a lot in this course. We need to work a little bit harder and think a little bit more to get our answers. Uh, my calculator says gamma is about negative 67 degrees, or like the principal angle there would be 293 degrees. 
but I don't want that principal angle. I want the angle in the second quadrant that has the same related acute angle as this. This is why um, I would say it is incorrect that your calculator always gives you the related acute angle. So my related acute angle here is not negative 67 degrees. It's 67 degrees. Watch how my calculations to find theta, though, are exactly the same as before. I know my related acute angle is 67 degrees. I know my angle is short, 67 degrees of a half rotation. So I predict that my angle is going to be 180 degrees minus 67 degrees, which is going to be about 113 degrees. Okay. Let's, I'm going to change one of these ratios, by the way. Because the ratio in this case that actually gives me the right answer right away is the cosine ratio. I might not know that, though. So I'm still going to introduce another symbol and ask my calculator, what's the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths? If I draw my sketch here, well, I'll, I'll show you how to solve equations with sketches. Try drawing a sketch of a circle with a radius of 13 and then the line x equals negative 5. Or imagine on a circle with a radius of 13, where would your x coordinate be negative 5? You should see that that happens twice, two times. Once there and once there. Just like the sine ratio happens twice, once there and once there. The tangent ratio is negative twice, once there and once there. Back here, my calculator defaulted to that answer, the answer closest to 0. Over here, my calculator defaulted to that answer, the answer closest to 0. In this situation, these two answers are equidistant from zero, so my calculator defaults to the positive answer. If I didn't know that, I would still say, I don't know what my calculator is going to tell me. I'm going to use a different symbol and say, what's the inverse cosine of negative 5 thirteenths? Then when I write down, oh, it's about 113 degrees, I look at my sketch and I say, yeah, that looks about right. So it is much better to write down alpha equals 113 degrees and say, well, I guess that's actually the value of theta than it is to write down. Let me just grab a scrap piece of paper here. You don't want to write down um, theta is the inverse sine of uh, 12 thirteenths. This isn't wrong right here, but when you write down theta equals about 67 degrees and then you write, just kidding, theta is 180 degrees minus 67 degrees which is about uh, 113 degrees. This is not good math because this says theta is 67 degrees and that's not what theta is. That's wrong. If you write down something that is wrong, there will be a consequence. Usually you lose a mark at least. Okay. It may just be a communication mark. So you have ways of avoiding that. You have ways of avoiding writing down things that are incorrect. Now, what does this mean for us? Does this mean we should always use the cosine ratio because it gives us the best answer? No, no. It's having to memorize that or going out of our way to like, like the fastest way of getting this angle would be using the tangent ratio. If I didn't need to find the value of R and the value of the, the ratios. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't, you shouldn't be looking for the way that's going to always give you the answer because the questions down below, the calculator won't give you both answers. We need to understand what's going on here. Okay. Also, if this angle had been in the third quadrant, none of these ratios would have given me the exact answer. Okay, um, I think what we'll do, let me just check the time here. Yeah, instead of, I said I was going to change it, let's just pick a, a third equation here. Sine of theta, tangent of theta, let's do a cosine of theta being negative. Cosine of theta is negative one third. I think I'll do A and then C because the approach for those um, are, is, is similar. We're asked to solve for theta if theta is a principal angle, if theta is between zero and 360 degrees. You don't want to start with uh, calculator work. You can you pick up your calculator, you type it in, your calculator is going to give you one answer. Let me illustrate right here. Inverse tangent of negative 1, negative 45. That's not even one of the right answers because it's not between 0 and 360 degrees. No. Start with a definition 
and a sketch. Okay. You can write this down right next to your ratio. The definition of the sine of theta is it's the ratio of y over r. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write my advice here in red um, or blue, is I'm, I'm going to sketch a circle. Sketch, sketch, circle of radius 2. Let's start there. A little bit of space. Doesn't need to be that accurate. So that's like over 2, up 2, left 2, down 2. Got it. And then the line y equals 1. Find your y axis. There it is. Find where y would be 1. That's going to happen about halfway up, right? But then find the points on the circle where your y value is 1. That's going to happen there and there. And draw those angles from the center, the vertex at the origin to the point on the circumference of your circle there. And that's going to show you that you have two answers. Do you remember how useful sketching parabolas was to remembering that there are two answers? I'm ready to do this question now. I am ready for the fact that this question is going to have two answers. I'm also ready for the fact that I'm pretty sure my calculator is going to tell me one of those answers. I think it's going to tell me theta 1. And I know how I'm going to find theta 2. I'm going to do 180 degrees minus theta 1 to get theta 2. Fine. So I could lock in that theta 1 is going to be the inverse sine of 1 half. I don't think I need to. I'm still going to just practice um, using a temporary value uh, or symbol for my calculator answer. I'm going to ask my calculator. In a couple of days, we won't need the calculator to do this. What is the inverse sine of 1 half? It's going to be 30 degrees. It's a special angle. Whoa, 30 degrees. So I get beta is actually exactly 30 degrees. Now I look at my sketch and I say, yeah, that looks like that's what theta 1 is. So theta 1 is 30 degrees, but theta 2, my second solution, show your reader how you get the operation, what operation you do. Announce that it is a different value of theta. Use a subscript, show your work, make sure that you add units. So, yeah, show and show. Okay. Now, could we have used the cast rule to remember C A S T? That sine ratios are positive in the first and the second quadrant to remember that there's going to be two solutions? I guess, but then I need to remember the cast rule where I kind of want my sketch anyways to figure out how am I going to find theta 2. My sketch like makes the cast rule unnecessary. Let's swing on over to the cosine of theta being negative 1 third. I'm going to sketch a ra circle of radius 3. And I'm going to make my x value negative 1 because the cosine of theta is a ratio of x to r. How do I know that x isn't positive 1? Well, because my radius can't be negative. That'll be a problem in the, in the next question. So sketch a circle of radius 3. My circle of radius 3 is going to look pretty much the same as my circle of radius uh, 2 because I'm deciding the scale. And then sketch the vertical line x equals negative 1 or figure out when on your circle is your x coordinate negative 1. So you're not really looking to draw a triangle here. It's more about dealing with the circle. There's theta 1, an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Here's theta 2, an angle between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. And theta 1 and theta 2 are going to have the same related acute angle. I don't see any reason why my calculator would give me an angle in the first quadrant or some negative angle in this case. So again, I think my calculator is going to give me theta 1. Still, I'm suspicious. This is not going to be a special ratio or a special angle, so we will need an approximation. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like about 120 degrees. Inverse cosine of negative 1 third. Okay, not my best estimate, but still pretty close. 109 degrees. 
that looks like it's theta one to me. Okay. To get theta two, um, my advice is don't look for the shortest possible way. The shortest way is doing 360 degrees minus 109 degrees. I think you might find it better if you're always finding your related acute angle. So let's show our reader our related acute angle is going to be 180 degrees minus 109 degrees. That's going to be 71 degrees. We are 71 degrees back from the negative x-axis. Theta 2 on my sketch, I see, is going to be 71 degrees past a half rotation. 71 degrees bigger than 180 degrees or about 251 degrees. Uh, 71 plus 180, yeah. Now you can try checking your answer. Um, you shouldn't use trial and error to try to solve these equations because there's, there's, that's never a good strategy. Cosine of 251, I mean, it's close to negative 3.333. This is because I've rounded off. If your work is getting a little bit messy, you might want to actually like put a box around your two final answers. Now, since we have some experience with trig ratios, maybe we're not so surprised that there are uh, sometimes two answers. Last one, tangent ratios are a little bit different because they don't have the radius in them. First thing I'm gonna do here is write this as a fraction. Negative one can be written as negative one whole. Next, I'm going to write down my definition that this is the ratio of x to uh, y to x. But here's the issue. There's, there's something called ambiguity here. When my sine ratio was positive, I knew that y was positive because r has to be positive. This could not be the ratio of two negative numbers giving me a positive ratio because my radius couldn't be negative. In question C, when I said that the cosine ratio was negative, I knew that it was the x value that was negative because my radius can't be negative. In question B, all I know is that the ratio of y to x is negative one to or is negative one to one. I don't know if y is negative or if x is negative. So almost like splitting up solutions from a quadratic equation into the positive and the negative, I strongly suggest that you do this. Write that the tangent of theta could be negative one over positive one, or the tangent of theta could be positive one over negative one. Okay. Memorizing the cast rule, I suppose, could help here. For these sketches, you're not really starting with a circle. You don't need to calculate your radius. Try drawing the point uh, where x is 1 and y is negative 1. And the point where y is 1 and x is negative 1. Back 1, up 1. Like that. My second solution is actually what I would usually call theta 1. My first solution would be theta 2. doesn't really matter the order that you number it in, but I, I don't know. I kind of like theta 1 being the smaller of the two. Now, if you look at this uh, angle really, really carefully, you might be able to predict that this is going to be up 45 degrees because um, we're, we're at a slope of 1. We're creating isosceles triangles here. Okay. I'm going to ask my calculator for a little bit of help, though, to make sure. What is the inverse tangent of negative one calculator? And I'm gonna predict what it's going to tell me. It's going to tell me the answer closest to zero. That's not the answer closest to zero. That's not the answer closest to zero. It's gonna give me this answer down here. It's gonna give me a negative answer because that's um, the answer where the inverse tangent is negative one. That is closest to zero. It tells me negative 45 degrees. Now, in this case, the answer that my calculator gives me isn't even one of the solutions that I was looking for, because I want to find the solutions. I want to solve. I want to find the values of theta that satisfy the equation um, for only principal angles. This is not my related acute angle, but it's pretty much telling me my related acute angle. Theta 1 is going to be 45 degrees back from 180 degrees. Theta 2 is going to be 45 degrees back from 360 degrees. Do you notice the way that we calculate the second angle changes depending on the ratio? Don't try to memorize that. 
If you remember to draw a sketch, then your sketch will show you what to do. Common questions here. How do you know that you need to do that we're not doing 180 degrees plus 45 degrees? Well, because my sketch says not to do that. My sketch says that theta 1 is going to be 180 degrees minus 45 degrees, which is, sorry, these aren't approximations, uh, 135 degrees. And my sketch tells me that theta 2 is in the fourth quadrant. The cast rule would tell me that tangent ratios are negative in the fourth and the second quadrant, but I, I could just use my sketch in the definition. 360 degrees minus 45 degrees is a special angle called 315 degrees. Okay. Each one of these equations has two solutions. Your calculator will sometimes give you one of them, sometimes it will give you none of them. You need to use your brain to operate your tool. Your calculator is just a tool. It's just going to tell you some answer, not the answer. Use your sketches and your definitions to find the solutions. Try it out.